All right, guys, today we're gonna to be talking about my experience EDCing the Hinderer XM18. Now this knife is one of the more old school kind of blades. It was one of the kind of original uh, high-end folders that was released into the EDC market back with the um, Chris Reeve Sabenza, the Strider SNG. They all kind of came out around the same time or kind of rose to popularity, I should say, around the same time. So I thought I would talk about my experience EDCing the Hinderer XM18. Now this is my most recent pickup and I've had this one for I think three or four months now, but this guy I've actually had for over two years and this one I definitely have a lot more experience EDCing. So I thought I would talk about my joint experience carrying both of them, what I think about them and are they really worth picking up? So for me, I have to say, at least from a size perspective, I really do love the three inch version of the Hinder XM18. And the primary reason why that is, it just goes back to the blade design. Now there's many different styles. This is the Spanto tip version, but the XM18s as a whole allow you to have this really, or they have this really generous forward finger choil. So when you have the smaller versions of these knives, you know, having your four fingers on the handle, it's a little bit tight, it's a little bit cramped. It can certainly work but you're able to choke up and that gives you that little bit of extra space on the back. So from a size perspective, I think the three inch uh, Hinder XM18s are really cool and I really do enjoy carrying them. They're probably my favorite small EDC knife out there. And as far as it goes, I will say the detent is not always the best. You do kind of have to learn how to flick these knives, but they are smooth. They do work reliably. You just have to learn how to give them a good little push out the gate to get them to go. So you can see if you don't do it you know, hard enough, um, they will not deploy. But if you hit them nice and hard, or if you really push that flipper tab out, you're gonna get it pretty much every time. So this little guy is making a liar for me here in front of the camera, but it is a good knife. I do promise that. So as far as other things go, um, the ergonomics on them are pretty darn squared away and the performance from the blade steel, much to the chagrin of other people. I think I've, I haven't really had any issues with this blade. This one is made out of CPM S35VN. And of course I don't have any chips, any nicks in it. It's just fine. Um, you know, I don't really have any issues with it. I just keep it polished with uh, leather straps on my wicked edge. And that's really about all I need to do with this one. So anyways, that is the three inch version. Other things I do like about the Hinderer design as a whole, I think it's really cool that you can interchange scales. There's a lot of customizing to these guys. I still have this one in its original kind of ACU camo pattern, but uh, as far as it goes, you know, you can get a million different scales for these things. You can get wood, G10, micardas, um, titanium, whatever you really want. So you can get tons of different options, tons of different aftermarket stuff for these XM18s, and that is pretty cool in and of itself. So that is my three inch version. Now my non three inch version, my three and a half inch version of the XM18 is a little bit more modified. This is also a newer version, but it's running on skiff ball bearings, has aftermarket purple G10 scales on it. And uh, of course this one is the recurve blade, which is not necessarily aftermarket, but uh, it's just uh, this one's style. So moving up to this one, this is definitely where I prefer as far as blade length, handle length goes. It's definitely comfortable to hold in either choked up or choked back um, configuration. There's tons of grip from the jimping. I really like it both forward and reverse. If you need to throw this into a defensive situation, this is going to be more than sufficient for those types of situations. And ultimately, this guy with the skiff ball bearings is like really just taking the hinderer to the next level because now it's a drop shut, super smooth blade. You don't even have to flick it out terribly hard to get this guy to go into battery. It is just very nice. And ultimately it's a really quality piece. I mean, both of these hinderers I think are made very well. You know, m most people like to smack talk the hinderer knives uh, because of controversies. But I think that from my carry experience on both of these guys, they have been made really well, really fantastic. And I have had to deal with um, customer service a few times because both of these knives I got got used or I got them used. So one was missing this little screw up here for the little tab. And then this one was actually missing its um, lock bar. Um, trying to remember what you'd call this guy, but this basically this lock bar disc, that over travel disc, 
uh, keeps the lock bar from over traveling. So don't know how I, that was missing, but it was. And so I contacted the customer service for both of those cases. And uh, I think I had to pay like a dollar or two um, for both of them. And so really cheap or really affordable, really easy stuff. And once again, the hinderer team just got me taken care of really easily. Like there wasn't a lot of conversation. Like I didn't have to go back and forth with them. They're just like, hey, you know, those uh, extra pieces cost like a dollar or two, you know, for each of them. And uh, yeah, so just, they sent me a PayPal request, paid for it, got them sent in and got both of my uh, hinderers back into full condition. Now granted, neither of those two pieces were exactly mission critical. You know, the blade still functioned without the extra screw for the tab, without the lock bar stabilizing disc, but it's nice to see that their customer service will get you taken care of just fine. So that's kind of my experience with um, Hinderer, Rick Hinderer knives and my two XM18s. I really like Hinderers as a whole. I think it's more of a like personal aesthetic. Some some people end up liking, you know, Chris Reeve a little bit more. Some people end up liking Strider a little bit more. And certainly, once again, I have my Strider. I have my Chris Reeve uh, Sabenza in large and cozy. Um, I like these guys just fine. I think they're nice and they're nice enough. But I do end up liking my Hinderers just a little bit more for EDC. Anyways, guys, that's kind of my experience with the past two years of EDCing. Um, hinder xm18s i think they're really fantastic knives they're definitely high end so you have to know that you know getting into it you are buying knives that are expensive but if you're in that price range for chris reeve knives for striders for you know kind of upper end you know things like chavez um or or grismo or shiro or shirogorov you know um these are definitely knives that are comparable to them. And actually, you know, I have done videos talking about the hinderers because of their controversy. Sometimes you can end up finding hinderers for cheaper than other, you know, comparable different brands. So I think the quality is there. I think they're good knives, but uh, yeah, I definitely have no regrets in carrying them. I still carry them every day and really do like them. As always, guys, God bless and I'm out.